Hello all, welcome to Moto Lab. In this session today, uh, let us learn the basic principle of measurement of brake power using dynamometer. Let's get into the session. Measurement of brake power of an engine. First thing, power cannot be measured directly. Instead, it is calculated from force. Let us watch it step by step. How do we measure weight? These are the simple weighing balances measure the weight of a load. But actually it shows only mass. That's another lesson uh, we will deal it on some other day. As of now, we understand that these are the simple weighing balances measure the weight of a load. In other words, they measure the weight force offered by the load. Measuring weight force of a load using a simple weighing balance. The weight force of the load uh, actually pulls a calibrated spring in the balance. A pointer fixed at the movable end of the spring moves against a scale. Thus, it points the mass of the load. The movement of the spring is proportional to the weight force offered by the load. The same principle is used in brake power measurement also. Let us discuss it step by step. Dynamometer. It is a device used to measure brake power. We know that the useful power available in the engine output shaft is called brake power which is connected to the actual load. Dynamometer. To be specific, brake dynamometer is the device used to measure the brake power of an engine. The schematic diagram of a dynamometer is given here. Let us discuss the constructional details of the dynamometer. Construction of a dynamometer. The primary components of a dynamometer are a rotor, a stator, an orb, a scale, a counterbalance weight. The rotor is the core part of a dynamometer which is connected to the engine output shaft. A stator surrounds the rotor which is connected to the rotor by mechanically, hydraulically or electromagnetically. The inner periphery of the stator and the outer periphery of the rotor are connected in such a way that the rotor is allowed to rotate about its axis. Imagine the rotor and stator of an electric generator. The stator by an orb are connected to a force measuring device called scale. The working of the scale is similar to exactly similar to the simple weighing balance. The counterbalance weight located on the opposite side of the orb uh, is used for dynamic balancing of a of stator at all its working conditions. Coupling force or brake force. The output shaft of the test engine is connected to the rotor. When the engine starts operating, both the output shaft of the engine and the rotor rotates at same speed. The coupling force, uh, it is denoted F, uh, between the stator and the and rotor restricts the rotation of the rotor. So it is also called as brake force. Brake force me measurement. The brake force F uh, actually restricts the rotation of the rotor as the engine output shaft starts to rotate. 
the engine overcomes the restriction of the brake force F and the overcame force is displayed on the uh, dial of the scale. It is denoted as S. Now recall the method how we measure the uh, weight force of a load using a simple balance. In the same way the measurement of S also changes in proportional with the change in the engine speed N. Calculation of work done by the engine. Assume the engine is now started and the output shaft of the engine drives the rotor. For every revolution of the shaft, the rotor periphery moves through a distance 2 pi r against the coupling force or braking force F of the stator. And hence, uh, the work done per revolution becomes W that is equal to 2 pi r times F and it is expressed in Newton meter. Calculation of brake torque. The external moment or torque due to the force F is R times F which is equal to S times L where S is the scale reading and L is the arm length. This moment balances the turning moment R times F that is S times L is equal to R times F. Therefore, the work done per revolution becomes 2 pi S L and it is expressed in Newton meter. Calculation of work done by the engine. If the engine shaft rotates at a speed of n rpm, then work done per minute becomes 2 pi S L n. For our convenience, uh, let us consider the speed of the engine uh, engine shaft in RPS that is 1 over seconds. So the work done per second by the engine becomes 2 pi SLN and it is expressed in Newton meter over seconds. L is the length of the arm which connects the stator and the scale. It is expressed in meter m. We know that force times normal length uh, that is equal to torque. Therefore, the scale reading times the length of the arm becomes the torque. Then the work done per second 2 pi s l n becomes 2 pi t n. Therefore, work done per second that is equal to 2 pi n t. We can now calculate the power of the engine. We know that power that is equal to work done per time and, is, and it is expressed in watts. Uh, so the previously calculated 2 pi n t can be called as power. Therefore, p that is equal to 2 pi n t, it can be uh, denoted uh, either in Newton meter power seconds or in watts. If we consider the uh, speed in RPM uh, that is revolutions per minute then we can arrive to a famous formula P that is equal to 2 pi n t over 60 and it is expressed in watts. In the entire process we calculated the power by applying a brake through the coupling force between a rotor and stator. Uh, so uh, the calculated power can also be called as brake, brake power. So the brake power BP that is equal to 2 pi n t watts. Dynamo is an another name for brake. So that is why this device is called as dynamometer. In professional language, dyno. I hope this session must have been very useful to you. Thanks for watching. Thank you all.